33,600 views and it made me 80,000 views on my Thailand video, 40,000 views on this one, half the amount of views, yet almost 10 times the amount of revenue. Right, hello and welcome to another video. Yes, today, as you've seen from the title, I'm gonna run through from my experience what I've found have benefited my channel the most. So if you are looking to start a YouTube channel in 2021, it is currently March of 2021. If you are looking to start a YouTube channel, you have a young YouTube channel, or you've been YouTubing for a while now, then I'm gonna give you some of my best tips. We will also, at some point during this video, find out what I've made from some of my biggest and best videos. Um, some of the videos that I'm most proud of, some of the videos that may have the most views, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be taking you through how much each one of these makes. I've got about 18,000 subscribers in just over a year of doing YouTube, so uh, yeah, hopefully you find something interesting out of this video and you find something that can help you in your quest to improve your channel as much as possible. Please, before we get into the steps, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you very much. Now, let's get into the first point. So point number one is do something that you're passionate about. Do something that excites you and that you enjoy. For some of my vlogs, I do have to do a lot of research into certain teams, into football teams, into matches that I go to. But usually I, just, I love football a lot. I have a good base knowledge of football already, so I could pretty easily go out and make a video about most teams, knowing a little bit about them at the very least. So do something that you enjoy, do something that you find that you have a passion in, and it will come across on screen and on camera a lot more natural. Don't always try and reach for that milestone of subscribers, for that money, for those views or whatever. Do what you enjoy, and anything, that good, anything good that comes out of it on the other end is just a bonus. Now, step number two, aside from enjoying what you do, I'd say the second most key step for YouTube success is to have a good story. Now, we will be getting onto equipment and stuff like that in a minute and like camera equipment and what to use, what not to use and stuff, but that isn't the most important thing. I get a lot of messages, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or even just comments on my channel. What kind of camera do you use? Do you use this? Do you use that? And uh, whilst that is kind of a key part of what you want to do, all you really need is a smartphone. I know it's cliche to say that, but it really is important to have a good story and literally everybody has a smartphone these days. You can get free editing software on here. You can do, obviously you can film videos, you can do whatever you want on these smartphones these days. And uh, yeah, if you want to start a YouTube channel, if you just start a YouTube channel, this is all you need. But if you have a good story, then people are going to watch it regardless of what it's filmed on. And in terms of your story, this links back to my first point. Do something that you're passionate about. Do something that excites you so that when you're out there, the story is exciting to you as well and that will transfer across to the viewer hopefully anyway find a gap in the market and do something that is unique try not to do things and copy things that are done before take inspiration from your favorite youtubers take little bits from each one I certainly do that I watch a lot of YouTube and I take inspiration from loads of different creators I combine it with my love of football and I try to create the best product possible that I can and the best story possible that I can again yeah you just need to find your niche find what you're passionate about make good stories about it, upload those stories and eventually people will start watching your videos. Now equipment, what equipment do I use? Well we will be getting into that just shortly but it isn't the be all and end all on YouTube. It doesn't really matter what equipment you use. Again, I have said that you can just use a phone and um, that is good enough. Honestly, some of the quality pictures and videos that you can take on your phone are better than probably some cameras that you can buy. But case in point is a channel called Bold and Bankrupt. Now I'm not sure if you guys have seen his videos but he goes around, he travels around places like India, the former Soviet republics of like Ukraine and Uzbekistan and Belarus and places like this. He's been to Bolivia and Mexico and all he has is this little Sony camera. No frills, no spills. He makes good stories and the equipment doesn't really matter because the story stands for itself. But I do understand that sometimes, yes, you can upgrade your equipment and thus your videos will improve. Now, what do I use? I use a GoPro Hero 7. It can be very discreet, which is good at football especially. And uh, yeah, you know, the mic's pretty good. The sound's pretty good on there. And it can do a lot of different functions like time lapses as well. So if you are starting a YouTube channel for football specifically or for sport or something like that, or even just for vlogging out and about, and you feel a bit embarrassed about vlogging at first, then the GoPro is a great place to start. DJI 
pocket have a good um, camera as well but for me I've always used the GoPro and uh, I think its features are pretty good as well um, my second camera that I use because the GoPro can't zoom in I do need to take pictures when I'm at football matches is what I'm filming on just now so I will include some shots of it it's a Sony a6000 camera and um, it doesn't really I haven't like added a new mic to it, I haven't added a new lens to it yet. However, yeah, it is just like the standard kit lens and it's just a bit of a better upgrade than my GoPro that I used to all my vlogging on. If I wanna do something a little bit more cinematic, if I wanna zoom in, take good pictures, then that's where the Sony comes in. I also now have things in my studio, like the LED lights that are behind me. I have a ring light that I used to light up my face for a better quality video when I'm just filming inside. Yeah, really, all you need is a camera. Really, all you need is a smartphone. So get out there, don't be scared, go and vlog, go and do what you wanna do, set up something in your home. You can just set your camera up on an ironing board like True Geordie used to, and crack on and get started with your YouTube channel. And we are coming up to the section now where I'm gonna start talking to you about money and my analytics. But before we do, there's a really key part of this that I need to talk to you about of YouTube of uploading and stuff like that. Now, yes, you can have a great story. Yes, you can uh, do it all on your phone. You can have a great video ready to go. But if you don't do the following things well, then the likelihood is your video isn't gonna get watched by as many people as you want it to. So one of the key things that people forget about a lot of the time is thumbnail. Thumbnail is so important. Someone like myself, I've made videos about Celtic and Rangers before. Think of the amount of videos that are on YouTube about Celtic and Rangers. If you don't also think about your thumbnail when you're out filming, then you're going to be left after you've edited the video and you go, ah, I need to upload a thumbnail. Then you just pick one that YouTube recommends from the video and it might just be you talking and there's just a grey background or whatever and like the weather's not that good and stuff like that. So you haven't thought about it. And um, yeah, now your thumbnail isn't as attractive and it doesn't pop out as much as it should in and around all those other Rangers and Celtic videos that are already on YouTube. Having vibrant text and vibrant colors and images that pop out at you in and around all the other videos that are on your subject on YouTube is important. You need to have color on there. You need to have, yeah, a vibrancy about it. That's what I feel most of the time. I guess there are channels out there that, and I have done it myself actually when I've been to an abandoned stadium where I've dropped the color out a little bit and I've used it to, um, used it to my advantage not to have color in there because it's more about the abandoned stadium that I was in when it was a bit gloomy and gray and stuff and it kind of fit a little bit more. But for the majority of the time, I do try and make my thumbnails pop as much as possible. I include badges on there from football clubs. Next up, before um, you, you are loader you're gonna to have to look at your title as well now title and thumbnail should work in tandem let me try and think of an example now yeah let's take a abandoned stadium one for instance where I've written what the abandoned stadium is and then I've said on the thumbnail this was a stadium question mark and exclamation mark and stuff and my face is very much like oh what is this place this is an abandoned stadium it ties it in together the title tells you what it is you also want to have keywords in your title that people can search for especially when you're starting out but we'll get into that in just a second you want a title that people can search you want a thumbnail that links into it but isn't the same so they work in tandem so you've got the thumbnail telling a story through the image and then the title telling a story through words next up is yeah tags and stuff like that so you want to make your title as relevant as possible like I say if you're creating a video about any type of subject you want those keywords in there if I'm doing a Barcelona stadium tour I want to make sure that that is in that title so that when people are searching for Barca stadium tours mine's coming up. For instance, if I did the Barca Stadium tour and went, I stood next to the Champions League trophy, that doesn't really get me into the Barcelona Stadium tour pool of videos through my title. So yeah, it's important to make sure your title's relevant, but it also links to your thumbnail. And my final point on this before we look into some of my stats and some of the money that I've made from my videos, do not sub for sub. Unless you're starting out, I would say that you should never sub for sub or follow for follow. This goes for Instagram as well. Now, what is the reason behind that? Well, look, if you're going to have a YouTube channel, you want everyone to be a legitimate subscriber. And it might take longer to grow this way, but it will be worth it in the end. Trust me. Put it this way. Now, if um, when you're starting out, it's fine. Subscribe to a couple of channels, follow a few Instagram pages and start building that community. But don't rely on that to be your one key like form of growth because say you have 10 subscribers right five are follow for follow and five are legitimate 
these five legitimates are all gonna watch your video when it comes out, whereas only maybe one of these people, if any, will watch it. They're only subscribed because you're subscribed and they don't really care about your channel that much. Basically, these five are gonna watch it, these five aren't. That means you've got 50% of the people that your video gets shown to watching it, a 50% click-through rate. Now, if you didn't have this lot and you just had the five, you had five subscribers and not 10, all five would watch your video. You'd have 100% click-through rate on your video, everyone will be watching it, and that's when the algorithm kicks in for YouTube, and they say, oh, you've got a good video, all of your subscribers have watched it, and they'll start showing it to more people on the platform, and you'll pick up more subscribers, whereas if you have 10 subscribers, five of which watch your video, you only have a 50% 50 click-through rate, YouTube's gonna be like, oh, half watched it, half didn't, that might not be the best video, algorithm's gonna push that one to one side, but yes, if you have five legitimate subscribers, all five watch it, then that's gonna get shown to more people eventually. That's the plan anyway. It is better to have legitimate subscribers, but yeah, like I say, in your early stages, follow for follow a bit, sub for sub a bit if you want, but don't use it, don't rely on it to be your one source of growth. Now, before I show you how much I've made from some of my videos and stuff like that, I need to tell you how you become monetized on YouTube. Can you just upload a video and start running ads on it? No, you can't. You need a thousand subscribers plus 4,000 watch time hours in the last 12 months on your videos. So yeah, you could have a thousand subscribers, but you might have only uploaded one video, so, and it might not have 4,000 watch time hours. So YouTube does this to know you're legit. You need a thousand subs, you need 4,000 watch time hours. Otherwise, people could just, you know, have ads running on everything, and YouTube needs to know you're legit. So yeah, you need a certain amount of watch time, you need a certain amount of subs as well, and it's a thousand subs and four thousand hours. And then once you hit that threshold, once you hit a thousand subs and four thousand watch time hours, the next thing you'll need to do is set up an AdSense account. AdSense is um, the way that YouTube will pay you out for your YouTube ad revenue basically. Right then, so the part that you're probably all here to hear about, how much money have I made off certain videos? Now I'm going to be taking you through two or three key videos that I think um you'll be interested in hearing about how much I've made on. Um, the first of which is a Barcelona stadium tour video. 33,600 views and it made me 34 pounds. Now yeah, this one video, which you probably think biggest team in the world, Barcelona, you know, there's gonna be loads of interest in it. It's a long video, got multiple ad breaks in there which can increase your CPM. You're probably thinking that's gonna make you loads of money, but it made me just 34 pounds and that is in the entirety of the whole time of it being live so that has now been live for one year and 58 days and it's yeah earned me 34 quid and it's been a bit of a slow burner as you can see um, on screen just now look it really like it started off like in my first day it made me eight pence eight pence within its first day and it's taken over a year to even get to 34 quid. But yeah, as you can also see from this graph, look, that one video has contributed to 300 new subscribers almost. So that is people clicking and subscribing from that one video um, whilst it's on their screen. So, you know, it's a good performing video for me. It's 33,000 views, 34 quid, 300 subscribers, 3,000 watch time hours. So you need 4,000 watch time hours to um, get monetized. This video alone has 3,000 watch time hours. So almost, yeah, over three quarters as much the way to getting monetized, just this one video. Um, I'm gonna click on the revenue tab now to show you a little bit more, um, dive a little bit deeper into the stats about the revenue. As you can see, look at my CPM, three pound 80 and RPM, one pound, one pound for per a thousand views, that basically means. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, it's not a huge amount, but I hope this shows you and gives you a little bit more of an expectation about what you can earn um, through YouTube. I, I certainly had a um, bit more of a warped view. I thought 30 odd thousand views would earn you a little bit more than this, but it can do. It does depend on how long your video is, what country your video is seen in. Um, I will be showing you some more countries' videos in just a second, but yeah, look at this. My ad revenue is £32, and my YouTube premium revenue is about a pound. So you do get YouTube ad revenue, which is the ads that YouTube shows in front of your videos, but you do also get a cut from the premium. These are the users who don't want to watch ads. They pay to watch YouTube. They pay for a monthly subscription, and that does also get shared with the creator as well. Now, to give you context on how views can differ by country and how, um, sorry, money can differ by country rather, check this video out here. 
80,000 views and it's made me 18 pounds. Look, this video from Thailand, Thailand v Bahrain, 80,000 views, 1,000 subscribers from that one video alone and it hasn't even made me 20 quid. Don't you just love it? Ad budgets for companies who want to pay YouTube to advertise on the platform are less in Thailand than they are in Spain, for instance, where a lot of my Barcelona viewers will be coming from. A lot of Barcelona viewers will be coming from Europe as well, where, you know, advertising revenue budgets are a little bit higher too. So yeah, in Thailand, your cost per 1,000 viewers is going to be a hell of a lot less than it is in Spain. Look at that. In Spain, it was, or for the Spanish video rather, which is going to be seen in more European places, my RPM was about a quid and my playback based CPM was about three quid. Whereas on this video, it's 23p and one pound for my CPM. Not every view that you have is a monetized view as well. You know, some people will, will have watched some videos before yours and hit loads of ads and then they watch a video on your channel and they don't get hit with any ads. Let me try and find a British video here for you. Let's look at, hmm, which one will we go for? Let's, uh, why don't we go for my Dundee video? So, Dundee, the closest derby in Britain, 43,000 views and £101 in revenue. You see, it's not even got that many less views than the Barcelona video, which made me 30 quid, but then 43,000 views made me 100 quid on this video, and um, yeah, look, 80,000 views on my Thailand video, 40,000 views on this one, half the amount of views, yet almost 10 times the amount of revenue. So it can completely sway, even based on, yeah, location, time of year, if you're uploading a video around December, hence the amount of content that came out around Vlogmas. Advertising revenues are a lot bigger in December, so you're gonna get a bigger share of the pot when, when you're uploading in that time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope you got some value out of it. If you're looking to start a channel or you have a channel, I hope this has given you some tips and some pointers and you've learned a bit about how much you can make and stuff like that. Um, please do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Drop me some comments down below if I haven't answered the questions that you wanted to hear today. Um, I will try and get back to every single one I can. Thank Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.